Mr. Woodshaw. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the bill. The, propo the proposed amendments to this bill will ensure the sustainability, security and reliability of our power sector. By setting green standards, we are sending a clear signal that our commitment on the sustainability towards the Singapore Green Plan 2030 is beyond rhetoric and about getting things done. To strengthen energy resilience, the government has a dual strategy. First is the diversification of energy sources by harnessing four switches, namely natural gas, solar, regional power grids, and emerging low carbon alternatives. Second is by working closely with generation companies to provide critical additional capacity. The adoption of this dual strategy delivers sustainable energy for Singapore and supports a viable industry that contributes to our GDP. Notwithstanding, I would like to put forward three clarifications to this bill. Firstly, on the insertion of F, the inspection of electrical installations to assess their safety in Section 2 of the Electricity Act, I would like to ask what sort of authority would a market support services licensee have to enter a residence premise and on what grounds would this be reasonable? In addition, what is the remedy to these safety issues and what are the specific safety issues EMA is most concerned with? Secondly, on the insertion of in connection with any proposed under paragraph A to construct, acquire, whether by purchase, lease, or otherwise develop, manage, including by leasing out for use or operate in section 3 of 3 of the Electricity Act, I'd like to ask whether the use of the word operate involves full operating maintenance cost. Thirdly, on the insertion of 11, this section except subsection 1c applies to any infrastructure including cable pipe blocks and tunnels, housing or intended to house any transmission electric cable as it applies to any high voltage electricity cable under the management or control of electricity licensee in section 80 of the Electricity Act. I'd like to ask whether the minimum refers to high voltage 6.6 .6 kV and 22 kV or transmission electricity cable 66 kV or higher. In addition, have MTI EMA assessed the need to protect all above ground access to underground infrastructure, especially since the core intention is to protect the underground infrastructure itself? I also have three proposals for MTI's consideration. Firstly, we must continue to work with private sector to provide additional capacity, reduce energy wastage, and implement innovative solutions to optimize usage of energy. The district cooling system is one innovative and practical example. It is an underground centralized cooling and heating system for air conditioning of buildings. With district cooling, building owners need not invest in having their own chillers thereby removing capital expenditure. Currently, we have one at Marina Bay that is managed by SP Group and another in upcoming Tengah development. Ice tanks form part of a unique design feature of district cooling systems which harnesses energy to cool the ice tanks when demand is low and provides additional cooling capacity when demand is high. This system effectively shifts the electric load requirements and optimizes energy consumption throughout the day by tapering any need for energy surge or suboptimal usage of compressors. Such innovation implementation is necessary as current split units used in residential buildings that is both public and private operate in poor energy efficiency, primarily average more than 1.5 kilowatts per tonne because they are air-cooled and typically also has half or less the life cycle. These split units 
could be retrofitted with a centralised chilled water system that could operate at a significantly better energy efficiency average less than 0.65 kilowatt per tonne that capitalises on economies of scale. As global temperatures are set to rise, Singapore needs to fundamentally change the way we cool spaces and scale efficient cooling systems. Beyond implementing new innovations such as district cooling systems in new development estates, we need to explore ways to implement such systems in mature business districts and residential estates. Beyond grants such as the district cooling grant, we should tap on private sector innovations and financing schemes. For building owners who would like to convert their existing chiller plant ownership into a utility-based cooling as a service, the private sector can offer to buy over their chiller plant from building owners and sell back chilled water as a utility. This way, capital expenditure is avoided by leveraging on private sector's innovative financing model. This will help building owners' cash flow to support their core businesses, especially during this tight economic situation, and make the transition to more sustainable consumption easier. Separately, as we implement an energy reset, urban planning parameters and users should consider various energy needs throughout the day. The peak energy needs of one activity can be curated to offset another activity through a different demand period and leading to more optimum use of energy. This could be an important new criteria for URA's future requirements in mixed-use developments. Secondly, we should leverage on the latest advancements in building management software. With the maturity of digital solutions in the built environment today, there are significant opportunities to leverage on enterprise software as a service, often priced at affordable rates, with advanced fault detection and diagnostics and AI features to analyze for actionable insights and optimize energy efficiency, especially during low building occupancy so that energy usage commensurates with the level of occupancy and activities. It can also proactively support predictive maintenance, which improves plants' resiliency and efficiency. This is done through smart sensing, automated response, and optimization. With its advanced features, it will also ensure the health and wellness of the built environment, supported with optimal ventilation, where it is required to minimize or eradicate infectious disease risk. Thus, it also always enables clean air for the health and safety of the occupants. Based on current industry advancements, there have been proven cases that such software-driven approaches have estimated savings between 20 to 40 percent of energy consumption at the building and plant level. The added cost-benefit of such software deployment is that it involves much lesser investments compared to hardware capital expenditure. Lastly, Adopting a similar design principle from the district cooling system where cooling capacity is stored, I'd like to propose coupling energy storage systems to existing Jankos to further improve the peak capacity demand and spinning reserve. If there are enough ESS capacity installed in the grid, it could minimize the supply-demand mismatch at a faster and larger scale. This will increase the resilience of the grid by providing more cushion to unexpected events where energy demand surge unexpectedly. Mr. Speaker, as energy forms the base inputs of all products and services, it has a direct impact on Singaporeans and residents. Fluctuations in energy prices affect Singapore's cost of living, and any disruptions has immense negative consequences to our industries and this puts jobs at risk. There are clear downsides risks to jobs and livelihoods. As we work towards reducing emissions, we need to ensure that this does not limit our economic growth. We need our economy to grow to provide good jobs for Singaporeans. This amendment bill addresses both the downsides and limiting factors of our current energy strategy by boldly diversifying our energy sources investing in new innovations to both optimize our energy usage and tapping on new forms of sustainable energy. Consequently, 
By investing in new taps, such as importing clean energy from regional grids, it will provide new growth opportunities and jobs for Singaporeans. I believe that we can reap the benefits from building a sustainable and efficient energy system that serves our national needs while enabling us to compete globally. Thank you.